to be questioned, to be interrogated, to be verif verified, to be vilified or, you know, to experience or the mocking. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus was still in the judgment of God, under the judgment of God. He was still in the heart of the earth. Understand what does it mean to be in the heart of the earth. It doesn't mean in the grave, okay? Jesus knows he to say grave. Do you think he doesn't know the word grave? He knows he could have said I will be in the grave. No, he didn't say that. I will be in the heart of the earth. The earth. Not in the grave. So you take it and then just twist it and say, appear to be the earth, the, 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 the grave. And then you count your finger and you say, okay, this is, this is this, what we believe. It doesn't matter whatever you believe. What matters is what the Bible says. What matters is what the Word of God says. What matters is a thing of God. Yes. Um, Luke 22, 64 and 65. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on his face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is he that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spark they against him. Even the Bible doesn't want to explain whatever happened to Jesus. Many blasphemous things. We don't just God didn't want to let us hear about that. They don't, were not written there. So blasphemous things against Jesus. So, <laughs> so was it Jesus enjoying at this time? Was Jesus watching football game? Was Jesus <laughs> watching movie, my friend? As you watch and enjoy, as he did, no. He was suffering for me. He was suffering for his children, the children of God. He was paying their price. He was in the heart of the earth. My Lord Jesus was in the heart of G in the heart of the earth. Yeah. Luke twenty. 3, 11 to 12. And Herod with his men of war set him at now and mocked him. All right, okay, um, I did that one. I'll continue to the next portion. Uh, Matthew 27, 27 to 31. The book of Matthew 27, chapter 27, verses 27 to 31. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hell and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and they stripped him, uh, him and put on him a scarlet robe and when they had plaited a crown of th thorns they put it upon his head thorns thorns crown of thorns the thorn very very to, you know, a damn, a damn thing to do. How merciless these people were. He was agonizing and physically, spiritually, and by any means and by any stretch. He was before the cross. He was agonizing. He was suffering. And they put him a, th a thorn, crown of thorn upon his head. And they stripped him and I took his clothes and made him neck and you know, did whatever they could do. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns and they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed to the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail King of the Jews! Hail King of the Jews! Smoking. They mock. They mock and mock and mock and mock. All right. 
and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Smote him on the head. Jesus, my Lord, my King, my Savior, my Redeemer. This is my Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He is my Lord. He is my King. He is my Redeemer. So be it. If you don't believe it, so be it. So be it. You're going to be a firewood. And you will carry, you will be punished. You will have all the suffering and you will experience this one. In hell, gnashing of tears, crying, 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 day and night. Because of the blindness. Being blinded by the devil and his enticing words, you'll be thrown into heaven, uh, everlasting fire. And you will experience that one. If Jesus doesn't pay for you, if you don't belong to Jesus, you'll pay it yourself. You'll pay it to your, yourself. <laughs> yeah, they did it to him. They did it to Jesus. And uh, 27 verse the, uh, Luke, uh, Ma Matthew 27, 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. Now he was in the cross this time. Now they took him in the cross and they put him and they crucified him at three o'clock. And, you know, he was there for six hours. For six hours and three hours, total darkness. Total darkness. He was engulfed with total darkness. Wasn't he experiencing the anger of God at this time? What's happening to him? Do you know what was happening to him? You count your finger. You mathematician. You scientists. You count your finger. How damn thing you are doing. You just believe in Jesus, believe in the Lord, and try to learn what he's teaching. That's the only option you have. Nothing more, nothing less. That's the only thing you can do. Nothing more, nothing less. To be good before God. Believe in Christ Jesus. He was in the darkness. So where was he? Wasn't he suffering? Wasn't he under the judgment of God? Why you count and the, the, the three days, three nights? Yes. All these were suffering of Jesus. He suffered a lot. He suffered for us. He suffered for his children. It was on th Thursday, starting Thursday, and come to Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Yes. Now, let's see some other thing and let me finish. What is a cup means? What's he, he was praying about the cup. That's the significance. What's the significance of the cup? Okay. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And nevertheless, not as I will. But thou will, as thou wilt, uh, or, or according to your will, is according not according to my will, but according to your will. Whatever is determined from the foundation of the world, I'll do it. But it is so sad, you know, so ugly, so bad, so you know. It was a very very bad thing to experience for him. So uh, that is Matthew tw twenty six thirty nine. He prayed about the cup. Oh this cup. What is this cup? What is what is it Jesus what Jesus was seeing on Thursday? Which the what cup was coming before him? And what cup was he was he ready to drink it? Do you know what? Have you ever read about it? Okay, let me continue. 
He went away again in the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not be passed away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. If I have to drink it, I know it, but, you know. Why he's teaching us? He is teaching us, we learn that Jesus was willing to took upon him, to take upon him all our sins, all our evil intentions, all our evil got upon him and was willing, but was bad. If this is bad, you know what I did for you? This is the worst thing for me, but I did it. This is, this was the worst experience for me, but I did it for your sake. That's what telling me, Jesus. That's what, how I understand it. It was an awful, awful thing. The worst thing. Horrendous thing. But I did it. I did it for you. I did it for you, my son. Do you understand me? That's what is the praying. I understand that way. How do you understand this? Are you mocking at Jesus? Are you saying? Are you confused? Baffled? Are you? Don't you understand what the love of Christ is? Yes. Yes. You better understand it. You better understand it. And you better try to understand it. Hallelujah. Greater love. Now it came up to my mind. Uh, let me read it for you. And from the Gospel of John 15, 13. The Gospel of John 15, 13. This greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. No, nothing. No, this is my love. I laid down my life for you. This is my love. I took and drew, drank the cup for you. This is my love, great love. That's what Jesus is saying to us. But do you understand it, my friend, my brothers and sisters? Are you willing to understand the word of God? Are you deep, going deep and reading deep and to try to grasp what God is teaching us. Yes. And now you can read this one for you. Matthew 26, 42. Mark 30, 34. Um, Mark 14, 36. Luke 22, 42. These are about the cup. This cup, this cup, this cup is sprinkled all over the Gospels. And the Gospels. The cup of the wrath of God. The cup of the wrath of God. Okay, I'm going to continue and read about this cup. For in the hand of the Lord is, I'm reading now Psalm, the Psalm of David, 75, verse 8. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he powered out of the same. But the drugs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. The wicked of the earth will drain it and will drink it. There is a cup, a mixed red wine. There is a cup in the hand of God. And all the wicked men and all the wicked women and all the rebellious women and men and the children of Adam will drink it. That cup, Jesus drank for me. That cup, Jesus drank it for me. I'm, no more, I'm not going to anymore drink it because Jesus drank it for me. On Thursday, he was, the cup was before him. This cup, this cup was before Jesus. This cup was presented before him that he Oh, to, he has to drink it. He had to drink it. He had to drink it for, so that, you know, men and women could be freed. And he had to drink on their behalf. 
He drank it on my behalf, on my sisters and brothers behalf around the world. If you are in believer Christ, he drank it for you. He, when did he start? On Thursday. Don't be fooled by the lies of the devil. The atheists, the Muslims, and whoever they are, don't be, just say, stay away from me. Stay away from me. Tell them. You don't have to ar argue with them. The children of the devil, the religion of the devil, yes, they came, they come to you and try to do everything, all kind of things to take you out of the kingdom of God. They try every means, every means to take you out of the kingdom of God. That's their work. That's their business. Because who, why? Because in the beginning their father did. The devil, he took it. Now Jesus gave us another chance and now they are trying to take us again. They are trying to snare us again. Now, let me read in Genesis chapter, verse, uh, chapter 3. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. It's not the serpent. Uh, the Bible says the serpent because spiritually the serpent is all the serpent, the Satan, the devil, and the dragon. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 19 and 22, 22 verse 2, which the Lord God made. And, okay. Uh, God made. He said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto him, The serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yea, he comes like the sneaky, <laughs> sneaky, a snake. And it's, he's a sneaky. So what he's, no, God called him. <gasps> Yea, has God said, Really? Yeah. Has God said this? I don't believe it. Hmm? And the woman said, okay, the serpent, we may eat of the tree, but of the fruit of the tree which ought in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shalt thou touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Huh? He's a liar. He's a liar. And the children are liars. And they twist the word of God so that they can take you out of the kingdom of God. The very first liar was the devil. So are they, his children today. Yes. Yes. But Jesus is good. The wicked will drink it. There was a cup in the hand of God, red wine, mixed, and oh, awful. But who is going to drain it? The wicked of the earth, men of the earth, the men, women of the earth, who do not believe in Jesus, will drink it, will drink it. If Jesus did not drink for you, you will drink it. You will drink it. If Jesus didn't drink it for you, if you don't believe in Jesus, that means if you don't accept him and live by the word of Jesus, you will drink it. Your religion will not save you, will not give you, will not save you from this damnation, the everlasting damnation. Are you Hindu? If you believe in Hindu, it doesn't save you. Are you a Buddhist? It doesn't save you. Are you a Muslim? Muhammad will not save you. He himself will drink this cup and you will see it. Whatever. And your faith, your religion will never save you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will set you free because he is the one who drank for us. The cup. The wicked of the earth. Okay, I'm going to read from the, uh, the Hebrew Tana. The Tana, for a cup is in the hand of the Lord, and the strong wine, that's, um, I'm reading um, uh, Psalm 75, 8. Strong wine, a full mixture, 
and he powers out of this the cup, but all the wicked of the earth will drain it and drink it. Will drain it and drink it. This cup, they will drink it. Jesus said, oh, this cup is horrible. It's horrible. Oh, let it pass from me. Bad. I'll drink it. I will drink it. Jesus said that. He drank it for me. And Isaiah 51, 17. Awaken, awaken, arise, Jerusalem, for ye have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath, the drugs of the cup of the weak, weakness ye have drained. Isaiah, he drank it for you. Now rise, O Jerusalem. Now rise, now stand, because someone out of you drank the cup. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus drank it for Jerusalem, for the true Jerusalem, for the true Judah, for the true believers of Christ. Now it's a rise and shine. Why? Because he drank it. Jesus drank it. Yes. Now I'm going to read more. Um, for thus saith the Lord God, Jeremiah 25, 15. For thus saith the Lord God to, uh, of Israel unto me, Take the, va the wine cup of the, the fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. I send you to the nations, all the nations, and you give them to drink this cup. The cup of the wrath of God. To all the nations I send you. Didn't Jesus, God, did God send to uh, Jeremiah, to uh, Indian nation, to the Pakistani nation, to the Chinese, to the Japanese, to all, all nations, to Americans? No. But it is a picture, is a picture. The picture of Christ, the coming Christ. God used the prophets as a picture to the, uh, the uh, to represent Christ, the coming Christ. Because Jeremiah was written 700 years before Christ came. So Jesus, God used Jeremiah as a symbol, symbolic representation of Christ. And as he did with other prophets too. So he said, I'll send you. That is just like representing Christ. The real substance is Christ. Christ. Okay, and now um, I'm going to read the last part. That's 25, uh, Jeremiah 25, 27 to 29. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus say the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, just you drink. This is a commandment from God. Tell to the people whom I send to the nation, to all the nations whom I send you to tell, tell them, drink you. Just drink it. Drink it and be drunken and vomit it, spill or spill or vomit it and fall and rise no more. Because of the word the this word which I will send among you, and it shall be, if they refuse to, to, to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, if they say, no, we will not drink this cup, Jeremiah, no, we will not drink this cup, tell them, you shall drink it. Indeed, you shall drink it. I am atheist. I'm not going to suffer the judgment of God. No. I'm an evolutionist. I will pass away. I will be okay. I eat. I dance. I do. I whatever. I will pass away. I will be okay. No. Says the Lord. You will drink it. You will drink it. You cannot hide from the judgment of God. From this cup. No way. That's what God is telling you. And what did he say? Drink it and spill and drunk it and rise no more because of the word of the Lord which I will send among you. And it shall be if they refuse to, to, to take the cup at your hand and to drink it, then you shall say to them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
the God of the army of God, you shall certainly drink it. You shall certainly drink it. If they refuse, no, we'll not drink it. No, we'll not drink this cup. Tell them you'll drink it. Whether you like it or not, you will drink it. No person will escape this cup, will be freed from this cup, unless Jesus Christ drank it, drank it for you, unless Christ took it upon himself, you will take it, you will drink it. You will drink it. Being a Muslim, you cannot escape it. Being atheist, you cannot escape it. Being agnostic, you cannot escape it. Being a Christian, so 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 and so, quote unquote Christian, you cannot escape it. Being Orthodox or uh, Catholic or whatever, what whoever, you cannot escape it. No way, no way. You will drink it unless you believe in Christ and come to the Lord Jesus Christ and tell him, Oh Lord, oh remember me, remember me. I cannot drink this cup. Please have mercy on me and deliver me and save me. I don't want to experience this in the future. I don't want to go that place. I don't want to be in the heart of the earth. Please deliver me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Give me, grant me peace wisdom and power and save me, make me the son of God. He, ca he can cleanse you from all your wickedness because he's going to take your cup from you and set free. And the day of judgment, you'll jump. You'll be, hey, hey, thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. You'll say that. Otherwise, no hope. Otherwise, you'll drink it. It's a sad thing. It's, it's going to happen. We are going over there. The world is getting more and more crazy, becoming wicked and wicked and wicked every day. The wickedness is engulfing us. So now there is a shelter in Christ Jesus. There is a hiding place in Christ Jesus. In the Lord Christ, we can escape the judgment of God. If you want to learn about this cup, read Revelation 18, 17, 18, 19. Um, a lot. The, the king of the earth will drink it. The, everyone will drink it. But now, it's a long, it took me a lot time, and now I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. And now, let me repeat that, Jeremiah 20, um, 20, um, Nine, 25. If they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink them. Yes. All the nations, it says, read 27 to 29, all the nation will drink it, the cup of the Lord. So, what does it mean? Jesus Christ experienced it on Thursday, the wrath of God, and now you can count, you can count your finger. Thursday to Friday, one night. Friday to Saturday, one night. Uh, Saturday to Sunday, one night. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the whole, because early in the morning he wake up, uh, he resurrected from the dead on Sunday. Sunday is a day of the joy. Was not this day of suffering. It's a day for us. It was declared. So this is the understanding which I learned from the Word of God. I hope you also understand this. And if you have any question, you can email me or you can leave under the video. Uh, may God bless you. May God enlighten our eyes so that we may see his wondrous work is, word is, and we may understand his precious word, life-saving, soul-saving, and life-changing word, a Bible. Until then, uh, be uh, peaceful and be God. Uh, let God be with you. Uh, I just 
see you in our summer days. Take care. Bye.